So if you've been reading the news, you probably heard that Uber was hacked. Now what's super interesting is this wasn't a serious organized crime group or a nation state. It was a single teenager. Now what's pretty unique is typically we would have to wait months to years for a full incident report to be written in order to find out what happened, who was behind it. But in this case, the hacker was actually spamming their Telegram handle from Uber's account. So people just were able to reach out to the hacker and ask them how they did it. And how they did it was pretty interesting. It sounds like first they got a user's username and password. As of right now, it's not clear how they did that. Group IB have suggested that they might have bought it from an online site that basically sells stolen credentials. Others have suggested they got it themselves. That part is still not clear. But Uber had multi-factor authentication enabled, which meant even with this employee's username and password, they could not log in because the employee had to approve the login. Now, whenever they attempted to log in, it would send a push notification to the employee's phone and they would be asked whether they want to approve or decline the login. Now, they basically just kept logging in and hoping that the employee would accidentally hit approve, but they never did. So the attacker actually moved to contacting the employee on WhatsApp, claiming to be from Uber's IT team and basically asked them to manually approve the login, which they did. Now this is a textbook social engineering attack and it happens all the time. These organizations can have hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of employees and the chance that someone accidentally gives their credentials and multi-factor authentication token out is pretty much near 100%. But that shouldn't be the end of the line. But what happened next is where things get really, really bad for Uber. Now after scanning the network, they found a shared drive that contained a PowerShell script and this PowerShell script had the admin credentials for the PAM or Privileged Access Manager. Now the PAM is basically responsible for managing and securing the most privileged accounts on the network. So once they got the credentials to that, it was game over. They had access to the company's Google Cloud, their AWS account, their expenses dashboard, even their antivirus. They basically were able to compromise absolutely everything on the network in one fell swoop. Now, the real mistake is not the social engineering. That happens all the time. It was the fact that they had hard-coded admin credentials in a PowerShell script that was just accessible on a shared drive. Now, of course, it's not clear why this was the case or how it got there or who put it there. I'm sure we'll find out way down the line when a full incident report has been done. But what we do know is a single 18 year old was able to go from social engineering an employee to basically a full network compromise in a very small amount of time. And coincidentally, this is all happening in the midst of the trial of Uber's ex CISO. Their previous security chief actually got indicted on federal charges for attempting to cover up a breach. Hackers got into Uber's network in 2016 they stole a bunch of user data, including stuff like addresses and credit cards. And then they basically reached out to Uber and said, hey, if you give us money, we'll delete the data. And Uber complied. They paid $100,000 to the hackers and basically told them to go away and never say anything about this breach. But investigators found out and the CISO ended up actually getting charged. And he's actually in court testifying as I make this video. Now, I don't work for Uber. I don't claim to be an expert on the Uber breach, but I have seen a lot of breaches that look very similar to this. Now, organizations often focus a lot of energy in not getting their employees hacked or not getting their devices infected with malware, which is great, but it's not the full picture because ultimately an employee is probably going to get hacked at some point or they're going to go rogue or something similar is going to happen and the hacker is going to end up inside your network. And that's not to say don't secure those devices, don't try and stop that from happening. Of course, you want to make it as hard as possible, but it's also important to think about, okay, what happens if the hacker does get in the network? Because that should not be game over. An employee being compromised should not lead to the entire network being owned. But anyway, those are my thoughts based on the info that has come out so far. I'm going to do some more digging and see if anything else comes out. And if I learn any more, I will update you all. And also don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my videos in the algorithm and every little gets my video out to more viewers who can learn more things about cybersecurity.